Despair takes us in when we have nowhere else to go. When we feel the heart cannot break anymore. When our world or our loved ones disappear. When we feel we cannot be loved or do not deserve to be loved. When our God disappoints. Or when our body is carrying profound pain in a way that does not seem to go away. Despair is a haven with its own temporary form of beauty, of self-compassion. It is the invitation we accept when we want to remove ourselves from hurt. Despair is a last protection. To disappear through despair is to seek a temporary but necessary illusion, a place where we hope nothing can ever find us in the same way again. Despair is a necessary and seasonal state of repair, a temporary healing absence, an internal physiological and psychological winter when our previous forms of participation in the world take a rest. It is a loss of horizon. It is a place we go when we do not want to be found in the same way anymore. We give up hope when certain particular wishes are no longer able to come true. And despair is the time in which we both endure and heal, even when we have not yet found the new form of hope. Despair is strangely the last bastion of hope. The wish being that if we cannot be found in the old way, we cannot ever be touched or hurt in that way again. Despair is the sweet but illusory abstraction of leaving the body while still inhabiting it. So we can stop the body from feeling anymore. Despair is the place we go when we no longer want to make a home in the world, and where we feel, with a beautiful, cruel form of satisfaction, that we may never have deserved that home in the first place. Despair, strangely, has its own sense of achievement, and despair, even more strangely, needs despair to keep it alive. Despair turns to depression and abstraction when we try to make it stay beyond its appointed season, and start to shape our identity around its frozen disappointments. But despair can only stay beyond its appointed time through the forced artificiality of created distance, by abstracting ourselves from bodily feeling, by trapping ourselves in the disappointed mind, by convincing ourselves that the seasons have stopped. And can never turn again, and perhaps most simply and importantly, by refusing to let the body breathe by itself, fully and deeply. Despair is kept alive by freezing our sense of time and the rhythms of time, when we no longer feel imprisoned by time, and when the season is allowed to turn, despair cannot survive. To keep despair alive. We have to abstract and immobilize our bodies, our faculties of hearing, touch, and smell, and keep the surrounding springtime of the world at a distance. Despair needs a certain tending, a reinforcing, and isolation. But the body left to itself will breathe. The ears will hear the first bird song of morning, or catch the leaves being touched by the wind in the trees. And the wind will blow away even the greyest cloud. Will move even the most immovable season. The heart will continue to beat, and the world, we realize, will never stop or go away. The antidote to despair is not to be found in the brave attempt to cheer ourselves up with happy abstract, but in paying a profound. And courageous attention to the body and the breath, independent of our imprisoning thoughts and stories. Even strangely, in paying attention to despair itself, and the way we hold it, and which we realize was never ours to own and to hold in the first place. To see and experience despair fully in our body is to begin to see it as a necessary seasonal visitation. And the first step in letting it have its own life, neither holding it nor moving it on before its time. We take the first steps out of despair by taking on its full weight and coming fully to ground in our wish not to be here. We let our bodies and we let our world breathe again. 
In that place, strangely, despair cannot do anything but change into something else, into some other season, as it was meant to do from the beginning. Despair is a difficult, beautiful necessary, a binding understanding between human beings caught in a fierce and difficult world where half of our experience is mediated by loss. But it is a season, a waveform passing through the body, not a prison surrounding us. A season left to itself will always move, however slowly, under its own patience, power and volition. Refusing to despair about despair itself, we can let despair have its own natural life and take a first step onto the foundational ground of human compassion. The ability to see and understand and touch and even speak the heartfelt grief of another.